This is appalling news. I'm Paul Chaff. As someone who has employed hundreds of people in the past, one of the first things I looked for in an employee was self-loathing and a hatred for the country they lived in. These fine examples work on the loony left coast of Canada for the British Columbia Centre for Disease Control. Here is a sampling of their job descriptions. The names have been redacted to protect the idiots. This one says, White Settler, residing on Laquinan Territory, Manager, Research and Writing Office of the Provincial Health Officer. God help us all. Get ready for the tsunami of guilty white women who wear ill-fitting bras. The next one is first-generation Canadian settler of mixed Latin American, European, and Wayu ancestry, epidemiologist and program lead office of the provincial health officer. How is one a first-generation settler? That is major self-inflicted guilt. We like how this individual included Wayu ancestry. The Wayu are the indigenous ethnic group of the Guayira Peninsula in northern Colombia. Couldn't she just have used that as an indigenous get-out-of-jail-free card? Our next anti-victim labels themselves as a white occupier. On the white self-flagellation scale, where does that go? Above or below settler? Further down the list, we have white settler, Scottish, Czech, and English ancestry, born and raised in Sequapank, the ancestral territory of Sequapank peoples, a lead manager, project research and reporting initiatives office of the provincial health officer. This person lays out the entirety of their horrific white gene pool as a skid mark of shame. The description, born and raised in Sequapank, probably means she was born in Kamloops. But she can't bring herself to mention this colonial outpost because she'd shit her adult diapers. The next bunch of mentally paralyzed women includes so many indigenous place names that we give up. There was a time that all we needed to know was what they did. Now they seem to need to tell us what they're suffering from. We will finish off with the final captured soul, white occupier of mixed European and Ashkenazi Jewish descent, public health and preventative medicine office of the provincial health officer, another white occupier, but her description is understandable as they are Jewish, and no one does guilt better than Jews. Tell me about it. Elle Magazine, Canada Edition. Once known for being a woman's fashion magazine, has published this article. These incredible Canadians have broken the glass ceiling. First up is Vivek Shraya, who Elle proclaims is a quadruple threat, a musician, writer, actor and artist, and one of the most incredible women in Canada. Congrats, Vivek. Next up is trans activist Faye Johnstone, or more accurately, Fake Johnstone, which Elle waxes joyously. Johnstone's passion rarely wavers, even when she faces hate and slander. Elle neglected to include Johnstone's hateful misogynist ex-posts, including this fashion statement with its obscure message. But you go, fake. Following these first two brave glass-ceiling-breaking pioneers, Elle tossed in four not-quite-as-brave women without penises, whose names don't matter leaving Cassie Campbell Pascal, the only straight, white, able-bodied married woman with a daughter, in the group for the end. Perhaps if her kid was taking puberty blockers, Elle magazine would have raised Cassie's place amongst this stunning and brave lot? Who knows? We understand that Elle is changing its name to Fella, because, as we all know, men make the best women. This has been appalling news, and that's the way it is.